part of the movement against plastic bags. And this one is one of the things that we uh, feel very strongly about. And I think it's very much true in terms of history. And of course, we in, in the vein of uh, being a progressive school, uh, I'm not going to say school district, but a progressive city, uh, we feel that this is part of the obligation uh, that we have that we're now working on being able to set the language for this kind of legislation that we look forward to, uh, uh, to doing. Um, now, before we begin our city council meeting, I'd like to uh, assemble our city council folks for a special proclamation that we have. And I have here uh, a proclamation. And if we could join, join me at the front there for the, uh, for the, uh, the honoring. Thank you so much. We love you. Put on 
you know, early events, all the programs and everything we do all throughout the year for your enjoyment. Tonight is going to be a great concert at 8 o'clock. I don't know how long the week is going to go. National Bulldog, check it out. Great. Get this one last picture. And Let's hear it, folks. What a great day. the rack houses of Jim Beam. Every barrel's aged four long years for a fuller, smoother flavor. Our history's made from the inside. How will you make yours? Inside the rack houses of Jim Beam. Every barrel's aged four long years for a fuller, smoother flavor. Our history's made from the inside. How will you make yours? ...answer all your questions. Um, for various reasons, whether we may not even have the answer, or it may not be legally possible for us to comment on certain things. But we welcome again your comments. Um, and with that, folks, I turn the meeting over to Mr. Frazier. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Council of the City of Long Beach, held Tuesday, July 19, 2016, at 7 p.m. For a roll call, Council Member Gaga. Here. Councilmember Mandela is absent. Councilmember Moore. Here. Vice President Monroe is absent. President Torres. Here. Let the record indicate the presence of City Manager Jack Schumann, Corporation Council Robert Agassiz, and now the city to reply. Okay, one 
very last reminder before I, I turn the meeting over completely, and that is that, again, uh, decorum is expected of everyone. And we uh, feel very strongly that this is part of our function as a city, as a government, uh, that we keep decorum during this meeting. And with that, I will uh, ask for the city update from our city manager. Okay, uh, as a reminder, for everyone's safety, every weekend this July, lifeguards are on duty until 7 p.m. As uh, Paul Ferranti mentioned earlier, the city's uh, popular free summer concert series we, um, is ongoing. Uh, concerts are scheduled uh, various days at 8 p.m. through the end of the summer. Join your friends and neighbors for our evening for the cameos on New York Avenue uh, at 8 p.m. And on Thursday, the ever popular Bond Journey We'll be playing on deck in Boulevard Beach. Visit the city's website for a complete schedule, and we'll uh, see you there. Family fun in the park is back with the Recreation Department, featuring three fun activities for kids rotating in parks throughout the city. Perfect way to spend the day, especially if your children are not attending camp or they're looking for a quick outside activity. The next event, Make Your Own Book, will be held tomorrow from 10 to 1 at Park Street Park. Please visit longbeachny.gov slash rec for a full schedule. While the 2016 Arts and Crafts Festival was a big hit, unfortunately the weather didn't cooperate this year for our fireworks extravaganza, which has now been rescheduled for Labor Day weekend. Please check the city's website for further updates and information about this event. New York, uh, New York Surf Week was a big hit with contests, parties, art show, featured boardwalk vending, concerts, and more. Um, surf, in addition, Surf will all work their magic again, helping children and adults with disabilities from Camp Ability and the Henry Biscardi School experience the joy and thrill of surfing, putting a smile on their faces and making the ocean accessible to all. Thank you to everyone who helped make this great week a major success once again. Veterans and their families are being hosted by the Long Beach Waterfront Warriors, who have arrived in Long Beach on Sunday, and where they met, were met by a parade in the 8th Annual Waterfront Warriors 5K race, welcoming them to our city by the sea. Waterfront Warriors honor and aid wounded, ill, and injured veterans and their families by bringing them to Long Beach for a relaxing vacation and a variety of activities. Thank you to everyone who participated in welcoming the wounded warriors and their families to Long Beach. This Sunday, the Lions Club will be hosting their annual Duck Pluck in Kennedy Plaza, in Kennedy Plaza with games for kids, refreshments, raffles, and more. All proceeds go to the Lion, uh, local and Lions charities. Movies on the Beach will be taking place this Saturday night with Jaws on Neptune Boulevard at 8 p.m. Movies on the Beach series is presented by the local civic associations in cooperation with the city, support from local sponsors. Also, as a reminder, the Farmer's Market is open on Wednesdays and Saturdays, 9 to 2. In addition, Arts in the Plaza is open in Kennedy Plaza every Saturday, 10 to 3, through November 23rd. We look forward to seeing you there. And finally, a subject uh, um, which is uh, finished for today, uh, Baggett is going to be showing on the beach. Bring your own beach chair and join us under the stars this Friday, July 22nd at 8 p.m. on the beach at National Boulevard to learn how we can all protect our oceans and fight plastic pollution at a free screening of the award-winning documentary, Baggett, Is Your Life Too Plastic? We hope to see you there. Thank you, Mr. Shin. And with that, we'll begin our meeting, Mr. Frazier. First item this evening is a resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase an industrial turn mower. Okay. okay, this industrial mower is used for city landscaping, such as cutting and caring for the grass in the center malls. Funding is available in the capital improvement plan that the city council uh, approved several months ago. Okay, are there any uh, comments from the council? No, no. This is the first time. Any comments from the public on this item regarding the uh, new lawnmower that's greatly needed? Okay, we'll move on to our next item. I have two, the resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for the installation of toddler playground equipment at the city's child care center with the most responsible bidder and to amend the budget. Okay, the city previously purchased playground equipment for this location and it and is now having it installed. Again, funding is available in the capital plan that has already been authorized. Okay, well, thank you. It's uh, something we look forward to. Um, any comments from the council on the new equipment? Is there a timeline for this project? Uh, yeah, once we uh, award and move forward, there's a 30-day window for installation. Okay. 
Okay. How about comments from the public on this new equipment uh, for toddlers? <coughs> okay, we'll move on to our next item, folks. I agree that this resolution authorizes the city manager to enter into a contract masonry work at various locations throughout the city of Long Beach on an as needed basis. This is an, ad uh, an annual item to lock in the lowest pricing available to the city for potential masonry work. We do a bid to, so we can get uh, great deals. I so just have one question, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Does this include both the labor and the material? Uh, both? Uh, um, I believe it does, though. I, I see our deputy commissioner shaking his head. Yes. Yes, very, very good. Very good. Um, and again, we welcome when people see a dangerous situation, a piece of concrete that's broken, that you notify us so that we can get this work done. Uh, any comments from the uh, council? Uh, any comments from the public? Any questions on this concrete work? Okay. And uh, we now go up to our last item. Last item, item number four, resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for the rehabilitation of 150 West Pine Street Municipal Building. Okay, due to Superstorm Sandy, the uh, sanitation garage suffered extensive damage requiring rehabilitation, and the roof of the building requires replacement as it has outlived its useful life. Funding is provided through both FEMA and the Capital Improvement Plan. And this is part of an ongoing project that I believe this is the second phase of. Uh, I see. Now, during this rehabilitation, will you have to vacate the garage and the equipment that's there so that this work can be done? I'll allow uh, yes. our commission to the project. Welcome, Mr. Fabrizio. Good to see you. Yeah, I guess the, the question is, that, you know, when we're renovating, I remember the last time we did the roof many years ago, uh, that was a big to-do. Yeah, no, this is a really big project. It's a yeah. huge so, project. It's a case that's $902,000. $645,000 is coming from the FEMA Public Assistance Program to just address the back wall of the facility, which is in a really uh, poor state. Um, and all the back offices that parallel that wall, yeah. and that's the premium portion. And then the roof portion, which is approximately $300,000, um, is going to probably, it's going to definitely involve like, the vehicles being parked on the street and a lot of coordination. Will you have to vacate? Um, we're going to try, we're going to have to talk about that. <coughs> I think they're going to have to keep the vehicles out of the building, probably for a good part of the construction. Okay, so we'll probably have to do some planning. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. It's going to be a lot of Okay. Will you let us know what, the, how would you, what you plan to do with that. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Fabrizio, for being here. Oh, before you step down, how long will it take for the residents to be notified about the cars being on the street? Um, it's on the 100 block of West Pine, which is pretty much an industrial road, so there's really no residents walking there. Right, but it's it, it shouldn't have an impact. Okay, so there's not going to be an overflow into the I residential think, area? I don't think so. I think we're going to try to keep it within that one block so keep it area. Okay, thank there, you. If there is any impact on the surrounding areas, we'll, we'll certainly notify Okay, thank you. Cool. Any other comments from the council? <coughs> okay, and uh, folks, uh, any comments from the public? This is on the garage, the rehabilitation uh, work that needs to be done. You know, this is where we repair our buses, our trucks, our city equipment. Uh, very important part of the city function. Okay, and with that, I turn on the over. Okay, talk to the voting portion. I have one resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase an industrial turn bar. The adoption of this item. I'll introduce that. Second. Yes. 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 I have two resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for the installation of toddler playground equipment at the city's child care center with the most responsible bidder and to amend the budget. Would you just move the adoption of this item? I don't know. I will. I will. Yes. 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 Item three is a resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for masonry work at various locations throughout the city of Long Beach on an as needed basis. Would you just move the adoption of this item? I'll introduce it. No second. I will. Go ahead, Captain Yes. 
yes, which once again just to remind us that we would make sure that we advertise this information to make sure that women as well as minority vendors have the opportunity to be a part of this bid. Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you. I enforce the resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for the rehabilitation of 150 West Pine Street Municipal Building. Mm -hmm. Would you just move the adoption of the second? I will. Second? I will. Go ahead, that's my Yes. That's my Yes. Yes. Can I make a motion to close the meeting? I will. Go second? I will. Okay. Yes. 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 Again, thank you, folks. And, um, you know, uh, that was a very quick meeting, but, you know, an essential one for uh, the city functioning. Uh, again, uh, just as a reminder, uh, we have a three minute limit on the comments and questions that you might have. And we welcome, again, the comments. We begin our old good and welfare with uh, Mr. Patrick Assis. Good to see you. I didn't recognize you there. See? Yeah, I got a haircut. Yeah, yeah. I got a walk up. I get a haircut, I'm afraid it won't grow again. Yeah, don't worry, it's going, it's going back. <laughs> How you doing? I'd like to commend everybody in the city council and the city manager for the fine work you're doing. Patrick Assis, 225 West Clark Avenue, Long Beach, New York. Um, on the fine job you did on recovery of Sandy, our police force, uh, police commissioner Cagney, I commend them, everything they do, and all public works. All right, everybody's crying on the computer and talking badly about the city manager, the city did their best job, but they don't want to show their face. They complained about their board book for 12 years. I went up in a board book last night for the first time since you put it back. All right? Beautiful. Everybody's enjoying it, but nobody's coming up here to thank you. I want to thank you on their behalf because they don't want to show their face behind you and a keyboard. All right? Pat yourselves on the back and enjoy your week. Thank you. Uh, I just want to make a comment, folks, that uh, Mr. Arcees was the person that originally did the restoration of the Granada Towers many years ago. So we owe a lot to him, uh, too. Uh, and our next person at uh, uh, Good and Welfare is Mr. Daniel uh, Leparte, I believe, or am I pronouncing that correctly? I, I, I manage to mess up people's last names all the time. And, uh, yeah. Of course, uh, yeah, My I asked for your partner, right? That's correct. Okay. And it's good to see you. Nice to see everyone this evening. Um, I just have a few concerns. Uh, I'm sorry. Daniel Lampard, 723 West of Walnut Street, Long Beach, New York. So I have concerns about uh, the traffic conditions regarding Saturday's beach departures due to sudden inclement weather. Um, I'm sure you guys are aware that traffic was very dangerous for pedestrians and motorists alike. Um, and I say this not because this, it took me a long time to go the bridge. I say this because I really think it was a public safety issue. You know, many of our side streets where jamming down capacity, intersections blocked, uh, drivers ignoring stop signs, along with other various violations and safety hazards. And this was about, I'd say, 4.45 in the afternoon. And I understand that like, we can't control people leaving the beach and stuff like that. And I just, I just a couple of questions about that. Um, so, with traffic at Sandsill, and because it, it's a significant amount of time in the Long Beach, how can emergency vehicles get over the bridge? For example, ambulances have to go south pass off with trauma patients and things of that nature. And it's for that reason today that I'm speaking for you open that I'll ask some questions. You may not mean, may or may not have the answers, but. So are there traffic control protocols pertaining to these situations or have there ever been situations like this in the past? Yeah. Well, we, we do have our police commissioner here. I don't know if he wants to respond to that. And I know that this question has been coming up quite a bit recently. Are there any emergency procedure protocols for ambulances going to the hospital? You know, 
keeping it open on the bridge or things of that nature. And also, um, are you in talking with other municipalities, like Nassau County and Pat Hempstead, about keeping the bridge open and lanes and stuff like that when there's traffic problems like that? And also, like, when is when if there are traffic controls like that, uh, how do you inform the public? By what means do you inform the public to inform them that we have traffic controls in place? Okay. Very good question. Thank you, Commissioner, for being here. You're welcome. Good evening to the Capitol, Ms. Manager. <laughs> Uh, there's two issues that happen when a sudden storm appears. One is by national maritime law, or maritime law, boats have right of way. So when a boat wants to bridge open, they get present for all the traffic we have. We go so far, in fact, that we request an act of Congress during our fireworks displays to keep the bridge locked down for the two hours, but we've suffered the same fate because some of the boaters come, or some of the visitors to the fireworks show come by boat, so we actually have to put a perimeter around them and then when the show's over, they go back, and if they demand the bridge be open, the bridge gets open and everyone's stuck on the island. So there, there's absolutely nothing we can do uh, when that large volume comes, except for the notification, which is something we will start to implement. The second thing, uh, the second point is one part of made regarding the ambulance is we're in touch with medical control. So if there is a big backlog, we would divert to St. John's and Rockaway or to the National University Medical Center, because those roads can handle a much greater uh, volume of traffic. Uh, but just be aware that when those squalls come up and people leave the beach clubs in Atlantic Beach or in Lido, they jam up all the different bridges and the boating traffic is out there. And again, maritime law supersedes the vehicular law, so they have the right of way. And once the bridges go up, there's no protocol you can put in place other than aerial cars. Thank you, Commissioner. Very important information to know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, our next uh, person is Ms. Uh, Jessica Carriero. Carriero. And again, I question if that's not the right pronunciation of your name. Um, I came today to speak about the plastic bag problem we have here in Long Beach. And okay, we, we need your name and address. Oh, uh, Jessica Carriero, 14 East Garden Apartments on W. Um, and I just wanted to say that I've only been on this earth for 14 years, but there's been a major change from the years I've been living here from then to now, and it's only going to keep getting worse if we don't say something or do something about it, because after a while, we're not going to be able to do anything anymore. It's just going to be too bad, and too many people or animals or anything is going to be affected by this. And that's all I have to say. Okay, thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. I agree with you. You know, it takes it Tremendous amount of courage to come up and, and speak. We look forward to today for doing that, for being part of you know the, the civic responsibility that we all have. Uh, with that, we also uh, have and we're very honored to have you tonight, Ms. Fran Eagles. Nicholson, 74 Harmon Street. I'm um, here to talk about um, an issue that's been brought up a lot by um, the um, Canal Association, and it has to do with the traffic conditions and the speed in the canals. And I'm really here out of total frustration. Every day I'm in and out of the canals all day long because of the nature of my business. I understand that we can have a comp on every corner. I get all that. I get that people don't police themselves. But I'm asking, I mean, today, three times, three different times, and it's 15 miles an hour, and I'm driving 20. I'm giving you a ticket, but I'm driving 15 to 20. I have people on my tail so badly that I want to slam on my brakes, get out of the car, and start screaming at people. This is constant, constant, day in and day out. Aside from the people that are blowing the um, stop signs, it's gotten, it, I don't know, I'm there 30 years, it just seems like it gets worse and worse this year. It just seems absolutely impossible. So I'm asking if there's anything that the city can do. I don't know if giving, just doing a ticket blast for a couple of days and, and inundating the, I don't know what there is to do. But I'm reaching out to ask if there's something that can be done because sooner or later, it's something bad is really going to happen either to someone in a car, a child. It's a, it's a slow area. I know that there are problems in the West End and other parts of the city, but you can't see around corners. The cars are all tight. And it's just, it's, it's, 
a disaster waiting to happen, and I don't know what there is to do, but I'm reaching out because today it was like I'm done with this. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Hanson. You know that you know you've been a voice for that part of the community and the entire Long Beach, and we welcome what you have to say. And so, so uh, please think about what I'm you know asking for here. That's a possibility. Maybe the police commissioner also can come up and, and address sure. this issue. And We have seen the enemy and it is us. Uh, the people in the canals are the people that are speeding. We do ticket blitzes every so often. We can absolutely do one again, especially in the summer months. But it's unfortunately, everyone's in a rush. Um, when I grew up, we were a family of eight with one car. Now I'm a family of six with six cars. So there's a tremendous change in everyone having a car. Uh, the density here is just amazing. We've slowed the canals to 15 miles an hour which is a very safe speed and good speed for the canals, but unfortunately it's an uh, enforcement nightmare because to get guys in there to do that, we have to pull them from you know, a lot of the other issues that are brought at this podium, such as the bikes in the business district, the stop signs all over town. Everyone's in a rush, but I can guarantee we will be in the canal area during the next few days. I don't want to put the exact days so that uh, people are good for a day or two. Usually when we do a, a uh, dedicated enforcement, it has about a three month memory. So we try to get back into the area every so often as the complaints come in. This was the first one I got this week, so we were uh, already ready to deal with this. Commissioner, are you finding it worse in the summer months? Um, no, it's, 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 it's worse when people are going to work, when people are coming home, because everyone's in the rush, they want to get, they want to, get to work, they want to get home. Uh, when the buses come out, we get a tremendous inundation because they slow everything down by putting out their red lights. So it's just, it's just, it's a thing we have to get in there. And when you pull the people over, we pull over people that have spoken at this podium about speaking in the canals, and I make sure I put the right guy in there that takes everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Uh, name and address for the record. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'm here with the um, Baggett campaign across Long Beach. Um, um, it is very important that we stop all of the bag usage across the island due to the fact that it's going to start clogging our oceans and our seas. Our canals, as a resident of the canal, I see <clears throat> many, many plastic bags floating in the waters. And it's a horrible, horrible sight. Fish die, turtles die, and my favorite animals, and everything else will eventually die if you do not take care of this. Also, I have another thing. I'm a resident of um, Carrigan. It is not one of the best streets to be living on due to the fact that there are cracks, um, sewage, not sewage, um, it floods a lot whenever it rains. And I would just ask for something to be done. It's, it's getting bad. Thank you. You know that when you come up and speak, it, it goes on record. And this is what we want to encourage our young people to do, to be able to come up to the mic and do exactly as this young man just done. And again, we welcome it. And we will be looking into those things, those issues that you're bringing up. Um, our next person is Mr. Ronald uh, Metheny, I believe is the name. Hello. I'm not sure if that's the right, could be that I'm not reading it right. And uh, again, I ask for your part. I hope it's the Lantoria, that's your name, right? <laughs> my name is Ron McKenna, 613 on the road. Ron McKenna. Uh, about a week ago, it's okay. About a week ago, uh, we had a, a meeting um, in the Martin Luther King Center, um, and it was about the police involvement in the community, mainly the Channel Park and uh, Pine Street. Uh, and at the meeting, were present detectives, you guys were there, uh, even our state senator was there. 
and it was an, an awesome meeting. In my many ways, words, uh, it was successful. But at the meeting, um, there were a lot of questions that police could not answer. Uh, a lot of questions that I felt uh, that should have been answered, and, and a lot of the responses were sometimes this question above my pay grade, or uh, that's a question for the bosses of higher up. So one of my one of my two questions is. How come the higher ups or whoever's in charge, where did they answer some of the, the questions at hand? I know you guys were there, but there was uh, someone or a group or an entity that should have been there answering these questions, especially when these questions were geared to help a community that instead of going to protect it, feels bullied by the police force. Uh, should I go up? Question two? Okay, question two would be. Uh, after the meeting, one of the questions were answered and wasn't really answered because they just didn't have it. What is our police force uh, and those who charge the higher ups, quote unquote, doing to diversify our police force? Uh, we, we don't feel in the community like the, the police force is diverse enough or can relate to uh, all the communities in town, be it Asian, Indian, Black. And those are my questions. Okay. Mom and Karen. Okay, I, I see our commissioner is coming up. And, uh, uh, again, we welcome, we welcome those questions, they're important questions, and, uh, you know, as you can see, uh, you know, we, we have our representative team, and this is why this is so important for you to bring the questions to our city council meeting. Commissioner? Unfortunately, we have a very small police department, uh, and this uh, form was put together, together on two days' notice. I had already had a prior commitment, so I wasn't able to go. Uh, I checked with my lieutenants. July happens to be a very big vacation month, so I had a very limited staff that was dedicated to that. The three officers that went were Detective Sergeant and two detectives, which was a pretty sizable commitment, and they did bring back all of the various issues. Uh, one especially that we're looking forward to doing is having a seminar, uh, if the MLK will have us, to explain how to conduct yourself if you're being arrested, how the whole process works, so that we can take some of the anger out of the, the natural course of business. Um, as far as diversifying goes, we gave a police test last November. Uh, we had the record number of applicants. We advertised at every single MLK center in Queens and Nassau County, uh, encouraging people to come and take the test. The results have come back. Uh, we're not in a position to hire right now. We're waiting for the uh, list to be certified and the captains to decide whether or not they're going to do an in-town list or an out-of-town list. There are some other issues that are uh, not under my uh, control. So once that happens and we have uh, the openings, we will look to, to have the police department near the community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next we have Ms. Mary Lozevich. about a year to learn this. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, welcome. Um, I noticed we're not used to it. And I know you won't be leaving my, my address. You are not going to get my address. I have been stalked this week. Stalked. Stalked. On the phone, I made a police report. <laughs> 57 phone calls in 30 hours. All right? by some man who watches on there, and not my, just myself, several people sitting here, because we gave our name and address. All right, I filed a police report. They've heard of this man before. And quite honestly, he knows I walked my door. He learned everything about me. So I am telling you, you can have my name. I live in the canals, but as for the rest, and you can get any lawyer you want. You are not getting it anymore when you have that camera going. That is definite. I can promise you that. We're putting our lives on the line, giving you our name and address, so any wacko out there in this world today can look us up. He's pulled on my home phone. My husband is in law enforcement. He told it to stop. Nothing. Then he calls and leaves messages that people you know are in the hospital with heart attacks, waiting for a call back, but you know, you can't because it says private call. Okay, so I'm just telling you, until this is rectified, 
You will not get my name and address. Thank you. Is there anything we can do legally, corporate counsel, to protect those individuals who come up and speak before us at the council while at the same time fulfilling our responsibility in terms of the process? Well, you're really talking about Sorry. Sorry. You're really you're you're discussing a, a police action now at this phase of the game and it has to go through the normal channels and procedures, but in this uh, well, I'm not I'm not gonna say the name now at this point, but um, uh, we do request that, that citizens do provide their name and address, but you're not actually you're, if I can just finish, you're not actually required to get it. That's what I was about to say. Okay, that's important to Thank you. Yes, and again, Ms. Belisevich, I, I want to, uh, I, I feel horrible about that because I think that that's, that's the most horrendous thing I've heard yet on this council. It's happened to our uh, residents. I'm truly sorry that that happened. It's horrible. Yes, there's six people sitting here going through the same thing. That's horrible, horrible. I saw the hand with several people in the audience. Horrible stuff. <laughs> I don't think you will for me. Because they won't meet the police. They'll meet the police. So okay, so they, Mr. So. Arcees, I'm going to ask that, that we keep the corn. It's very important. And, and you, know, I, you know, I'm crazy about you, but we do we, we need to keep the corn here. Uh, our next person is Mr. James Hodge. Welcome, James. Good to see you. Always good to see you all. James Hodge here in our great city by the sea, Long Beach, 95 East Fulton Street, Long Beach, New York. To whoever the stop is, try it out. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that didn't take my time. Uh, one thing I want to say is, uh, so uh, purposeful uh, that you open this meeting up and you uh, talk about the grief that our country is going through uh, with the police officers losing their lives, not just the just five, but many that have lost their lives over the years. Uh, we give our condolences and prayers to the families. I have family members that are police officers and been in the military, my oldest brother, in the military for 31 years, and uh, correctional officers in my family and in the police officers. But also what we must understand, uh, where so many people get mad when people say black lives matter, is that yes, everybody's lives matter, but we never remember to say about all of those unarmed, African Americans that are killed at a, uh, a, a rate that is more than any, you know, uh, and, and, and so Black Lives Matter came about to talk about all of the African Americans that was getting killed on video, off video, you know what to do, you know to put your hands up, you know, and you're still getting killed. So some people can get mad and say, oh, he, he don't care about, I, I love cops. I worked in the police department as an animal warden until I got forcefully fired and prayed won my job back with the city. And uh, so I, I worked with police officers. I was an auxiliary police officer. I love the auxiliary police officers. They do a fine job. But I think that even as we talk about all the things that we talked about at the center, there wasn't some things answered. And for the commissioner to say, if they're welcome, well, we've been welcoming the police department to the MLK Center for the last four years, and he's here, and they've only come about five times total. So I extend right now, and I'm in my individual capacity, but I am on the board, I would love to set that up as soon as possible so we can do, so they can come and tell us what to do, but then can we go to the police department and tell them when they come to us what they should do also? Because I think that there is, you're doing, and again, I speak from experience. The city knows that I had a lawsuit against the city. I was falsely arrested and assaulted by a cop. 
And I still, I still love cops. You know, this is not about this administration. This administration, I think Jack is, is, is you know, he comes down to the center. All of you guys, I appreciate, you know, I'm wrapping up. I appreciate you coming to this very important forum. You know, but I think we do have some issues in this country when statistical data say it over and over and over. Let's get to it why people are scared because of because of certain imagery on TV and certain, you know, ideologies that people may have about different race, well, about different cultures and colors of people. It's real. This is not going to make it up. The statistical data is there. It's time and time again. So I would love to do whatever I can with the police commissioner. I'm here. I'm a board member. We can go down there today, tomorrow. Jack can come. Any other city councils. I would love, because we don't have a program to tell kids what to do when you stop by a police officer. What, we don't have that in the city of Long Beach. So a ride along program. There's so many things that we can do. It's proven out there, but our police department currently is not doing it. And I look for our city officials and our city manager to continue doing what they can to interject and make our police do what works. My nephew, and I talk about black on black crime too, because my nephew was killed about 100 feet from here, 10 minutes, 13 minutes from what the video shows, after the police officers got a gun call of a shooting, 13 minutes later they left, and my nephew lay dead with bullets in the, in the Radiant Channel Park homes. So there's a lot of things that we can do to change this, but let us work together. Yeah, everybody life matters. But let us remember Black Lives Matter too, and the only reason they say it is because they never get the attention that everybody else do when something happens to them. So I love you all. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Before I can say something, because I think it's important while we're here, let's just be in that moment. I think it's important for people to understand that um, the whole purpose of the Black Lives Matter movement is to, once again, it's never to divide us um, as a nation. Um, again, if the movement itself was about an anti-police movement, then that would devalue the lives of so many um, black officers who are also a part of the police department. And so I think we need to remember that. I think also all of us have to remove ourselves from some of the media that tries to divide us. The entire purpose of us having the ceremony last week was for us to say not in this town. And we've successfully done that under the leadership um, of our community and also with our city uh, officials as well as our city council. And the whole role now is for us to continue to do that, for us not to become distracted by many movements that will try to separate us, but let's continue to do what we've been doing in this this town, and that is building on the strength of our people and building on the unity that we already have. Um, and so I just wanted to just say that so that people will understand that when we say Black Lives Matter, it's just to remind people that the history of this country has, for whatever reason, devalued black bodies. But here in the city of Long Beach, uh, we have held to that premise that we are valuing everyone um, as an individual and we're treating everyone with dignity and respect. Thank you. So next we have Mr. Ronnie Miles. Welcome, Mr. Miles. How are you? How is everyone? Good evening. I might get my address. I don't want you stalking me wherever you are. <laughs> Thank you, Mary, for all of that. I needed to know. All right, just a couple of questions. This came to the top of my head when um, we were speaking about buses. What is the penalty for passing a bus stop sign when a, when a driver, is, a motorist is passing and they ignore the stop sign? Is there a is, is I think it's, I believe it's a three point violation. Is that correct? Three point violation. Three point violation. Three point violation. Right. Oh, for buses. That's right, for buses. Normal stop sign is three, three points per. I would love to see more offices out on Park Avenue. I see it every day when we have our school year, um, during school year. Not as much during the summer because summer school is a little different. But um, yes, that's that. Um, the boardwalk life lane situation, we discussed that last time at the council meeting. Good to have you back. Thank you. Um, 
we, I saw that we had that Arts and Crafts Festival on the boardwalk, and I was told by Mr. Obama, who was not here tonight, that you couldn't stain the wood. It wasn't possible to stain the wood. But I see stains on the wood, or some kind of markation from whatever happened from one of the vendors that we had on the corner of Long Beach Road and Shore. You can all take a look at that at your own discretion. But I'm still for the markation and, and identification of the bike lane. I see every night uh, problems with people screaming and shouting about, this is the bike lane. And of course, we have tourists here all summer long. They don't know that that's the bike lane. There's nothing that says it's the bike lane. And it causes uh, verbal altercations and then sometimes physical altercations. Um, so can we look into staining the wood, not not the lines, just the little bikes of men in that area, maybe, I don't know. Um, it's not for me to do, that's what you got to be able to do to do it. So um, that's that. I also wanted to get a follow-up on the study in Channel Park Homes. I looked on the uh, website, I didn't see any information about the survey, about the water quality and mold uh, density in Channel Park Homes, for those of you who don't know. There was a study done by Race Racism where they tested or interviewed 80-something people or families units in there and they found mold and, and complaints of mold and things not being remediated after Sandy. Also, there was another study done recently um, with six units out of 108 saying that there isn't any mold in those six units. But I want that study and I want an independent study, which is something that we discussed. So I want to know where we are with that. I don't have an answer to that. First of all, I would remind everybody that we are not the housing authority. Having said that, we posted not only the uh, in five or six years worth of uh, data that we received from HUD, uh, but the most recent, April, their April 28th visit that we got a letter on at the beginning of June, I believe we posted all that on the city website. Where exactly is it? It, it wasn't, which, which section of the page is it? the section but we can we'll have to we'll be happy to send it to you the board is over there and happy to show you. okay well let's make the website more user friendly how about that there you go we've got a project there we go sure. okay. good. Good. all right anything on the other issues no no board walk by clean marcation no no maybe mr Fabrizio could come up and speak about this could you come up um, and speak hey. about that my microphone is off you could just speak with respect to that. Because yeah. as a council, we've also talked about, and this is just recent, because this is an issue that has come like over and over again. And I know as well, being on the boardwalk and, and riding with my daughter and seeing people, especially in the middle of town. So what we recently talked about is larger signs, more prominent signs. I even suggested putting them um, at the train station. A lot of these people are coming in that direction, and, and so they see it. Right, when they walk up um, to the boardwalk, so they see it. There are signs now, but they're small. We have actually drafts of new signs that we're, we're working on right now. Good, because so, I mean, we've been talking about this, but with respect to the staining of the boardwalk, could you address that? Yeah, it's, it's very controversial, and we've gotten several complaints, numerous complaints, about a lot of them. The intent is like the, the, the center of the boardwalk has boards that are kind of the diagonal. So that is the demarcation, at least as far as we're concerned, the demarcation, and that is the intent to track the bike lane. Um, unfortunately, it's not received that way, as Ryan said. Uh, I've been up there many times, and you know, you get scared when you walk in some kind of recent spot, you on the bike, and it, it, it's kind of a, a dangerous situation for that. And I think we can have a dialogue about it. I'm not even saying it, it is an option. I guess we can some of the so I'm not familiar with how if they would. Um, take sustain, but that's something we have to look into quite honestly. I think Commissioner Lockwood has spoken about it. Oh, really? Okay. It doesn't take the same. Okay. Yeah, I think um, that that's the experience, at least in Puerto Rico, with that wood, that it just, uh, even food stains, for example, will last a certain amount of time and wash away because it's not porous. It doesn't absorb. It, it only stays for a while until the sun bleaches it. And then it's gone. And the same thing happens with paint. It will wash away eventually. These are the issues that we've been discussing uh, uh, with the council, with Mr. Black Ruba. Um, I mean, we, we're looking at and we, we receive.
receive the complaints all the time, Mr. Myers. All the, for the, oh, ever since, the yeah, yeah, ever since the board went out. Yeah. 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 It's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I have a family, and all of a sudden I know the bus coming in, and I quickly get my family out of the way because they don't know. They, they, some of them are not. I worry about the kids, but see, kids from Oceanside or wherever the island park or the Bronx, they have no clue what's going on with the like things pop some because we have some very lovely um, animated residents who say some nice epithets to these kids as <laughs> they're walking down the bike lane. And it's like if I heard somebody talking to my child that way, we're gonna have a problem. And so and we're not gonna discuss it. I'm, I'm just letting you know how I feel about it. I know a lot of people feel like they're not their children. So I just wanted to find a, a solution, a resolution to to dialogue. Right. I know there are special officers also. I've seen them out there, but we need more than that because they can't be everywhere at the same time. Yeah, we're so, we're combination of enforcement, uh, demarcation, or signing. Just staying there watching the plane. This is the summer. Just staying there. I knew you were going to say that. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bob. Thank you, Mr. Fabrizio. Our next person on the staff is Mr. Marcus Tinker. So, welcome, Mr. Tinker. Shots. I do have a meeting with Mr. 
Vermont gets some uh, salesmen this week, and so we are staying on top of it. Commissioner, can you just tell us, can you give us a timeline? When did this happen? When did you discover that? We discovered, plates, we discovered it about um, six weeks ago. Uh, we immediately got a call company in. They told us it would be a month before they get a rep out. They said that's not acceptable. They had a rep out in 48 hours. We identified the um, building as a problem, and then uh, it took us all this time to get to the federal government to get the okay. Uh, we had to all kinds of environmental studies. They, they want to know the exposure that the uh, unit would emit because the playground's on the roof of that building, and that's where the shot spot has to be. So we had to do, get all kinds of verified research that it's as much as a cell phone. And you know, there, were, there were a lot of questions, and we wanted to ensure the safety of the children. Now, how does that safe room work? Something goes off that's... Uh, the, the children are all ushered into the safe room. It's got a metal door on it, it closes. If you're outside with a gun, it's not going to go through the walls. So in other words, for people that, if there's a problem, that's where you go for safety. That's where you go. You run into this building. Yes. There's a camera on it. I don't want to give up all the security. Okay. Uh, right. I know you can. There, there is, it, it, it's a very, very good program. Okay, so I just want to ask a follow up question. So you said in six weeks you discovered this. Now, I guess you're a part of the crisis team. Does this information filter in some way? To your crisis team because this is the first time I'm hearing Marcus, that we, the, the team, I don't know, were you aware of this? Because this information did, did not get to the community. Either you or Marcus, if you could give me that information now, because I'm really concerned. Well, Marcus yeah, has my cell phone number. He calls me at all hours of day night and something's going on. They're really a very responsive team, as does uh, the Sodom and some of the other members. Uh, but Marcus is probably the most uh, vigilant. Uh, and Jackie is number two, so the others can, can beat it up a little and make me work on it. I have no problem with that. Um, and Marcus and I did discuss this last week. Okay. So that was good. Okay. So just, I just want to have a sense because, again, I know that Marcus, he's faithful to the community wall. And now I'm hearing that we were unaware of the fact that it's there in terms of the spot shot. It's, it's there, but it's not really working. So in terms of a timeline, when do we anticipate this once again being in effect? Very quickly. Very quickly. All right. And the second question um, regarding the, what are we going to do now that the test has been given and all the recruitment's been done? Unfortunately, we are under New York State civil service law, which, uh, I, and when I was in charge school, my paper was on the one-dimensional police testing is not the best way to go. And if you don't write a good test, you have no shot, no matter what you want. So uh, that's, that's one of the, the hurdles we have, uh, is people that, that tend to write good scores are not necessarily interested in being in police work. They're going to the business sector. There's sometimes more money to be made. Some are foolish enough to be lawyers. Um, <laughs> but on the whole, we have um, a, a great group, but we, we're not even allowed to look at the list to, to find out any kind of demographics on the applicant. So when the list is published and, and uh, the decisions made whether it's a local or local list, then we'll start the investigations and hopefully we'll be able to reach a population that is uh, equal to the demographics of that community. But there have been, Commissioner, there have been diversification efforts, even in terms of the applicant. Well, I know so, several members in my office were involved in programs in the community. Yes, we, did, we, did, we actually did a mentoring program. We did a tutoring program at the Channel Park Homes. I actually taught a class, and this guy is taught a class. We had a certified teacher come in. It was a six session series that I taught the last class, which was the, uh, the Thursday before the test, on all different te te testing techniques. I happen to have scored very well on all my tests, so I'm very familiar with the. No, 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 it, it just, it's, a, it's an ability I have that, that did bode well for me. And unfortunately, there are some very good cops, and very good sergeants. And they never will be because they're not as good a test taker as some of the others. And you can only go three deep before you have to appoint somebody or you're going to suffer a loss. And you're going to be found to have to make the guy the person whole. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Tinker. Okay, our next uh, person is Mr. George Bobo. Man, he's no introduction. Hi, everybody. I want to thank you again for attending our rally tonight uh, to, to take action on plastic bag solutions. 
Pacific Long Beach, and I appreciate all the work that you have done with us to this point. And I feel like we're, we're getting very close to uh, good consensus to, to make this a thing of the past, so I appreciate your work for this. Um, and that was really all that I came up here to say, but tonight um, I was actually uh, uh, moved there was something bigger that made me be here tonight, I think. And uh, I just want to say that um, I have the utmost respect for uh, our police force, um, and uh, I just want to affirm that black lives matter. And um, I have read that, that um, black lives need white bodies, and I um, will be that. Because it's something that I believe in, that, that without equality and without equal opportunity for all, um, as long as, as any Americans are treated different from others, uh, this is not the America that I believe in. And I have to say that I'm, I'm very sad as a, as a white person that in 2016 I'm, I'm hearing about how we, we have to teach black youth how to be arrested. That, that is just, that made me cringe. And I, I, I understand where it's coming from and I understand the thought process behind it, but it just hurt me to hear that. And, um, and I think that we, we uh, I, I don't think that anybody meant anything bad by that, but it, it, it just it, it hurt me and uh, made me realize that tonight I had to um, break my silence as a white person and just uh, make sure everybody knows that I believe Black Lives Matter. Thank you. I have a couple more seconds. I just want to say how proud I am of the youth here tonight that came to speak. And who also inspired me to be a little more personal about how I feel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bobo. Thank you. Appreciate those comments. Okay, our next person is Mr. Joe Graham. Joe, it's good to see you here. Come on up. Oh, boy. Dag Monster, Planet Earth. I'd just like to say that I uh, really um, feel 100% uh, with what George Bell just said and Black Lives Matter. And um, I'm, I'm coming here tonight as a visual reality check because there's millions of organisms that are in our ecosystem. You aren't aware of this that you have to be conscious about because they cannot have a voice. They are not capitalists, they do not have lobbyists who can come and speak up on their behalf when um, we do work to try and protect our environment, which needs to be done yesterday. We really need to get this. Thank you for working on it. Um, I, I wanted to also add that the um, single-use plastic, I think, as a bag monster, when I'm in the water, I notice that it's not just plastic bags, it's also day passes from Long Beach. Maybe we can use perhaps some sort of environmentally friendly uh, compostable material and possibly even put on the back of the day passes that there's a bike lane in the middle of the boardwalk. I just thought that might be a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
fly through the air, we are picking it up, you know, I'm always out on the bay and I'm cleaning up that, you know, we got 10,000 of them out of there and that was just in incredibly disappointing to see. Um, and, and everybody who I speak to, and including the merchants and the people behind this thing, so everyone is supporting you. We have the public, we have the merchants, everybody wants to bring their own bag. And when you walk into a supermarket soon after you pass this legislation, it will be your legacy. You will be the first city in Nassau County that will have this. It will be on your record, it will be part of you, and you will be smiling as you see everybody in saying thank you for carrying your own bag. That's uh, that's a really good thing. Um, as far as the other issues tonight, yes. Uh, you know, I'm part of this community my whole life, and you know, black lives always mattered. I don't I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know where uh, you know uh, this kind of thing. We have friends in the community. We, we play. We 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 see them everywhere. So in this community, I always want to say we're all. This this. Um, community efforts that you need to get the people out to, to come into this community. I'm always, I'm always there for that, and you can always count on me for that. So thank you guys again for all your support. Carmen, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Okay, we have next Mr. Uh, Matthew Adler.
Sunday afternoon at about 1 o'clock. I got a, a text message or actually an email on Monday. I got something this afternoon. Actually, my wife Amy was on the boardwalk. She said, they're fixing something on the boardwalk. I mentioned where it was. It was taken care of. Maybe, I don't know how to, how to maybe you put it a, 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 an ad in the local paper, not even an ad, just, just some sort of public notice to say, because I don't know how many people actually see this and actually use this, but it's a great app. I've done this several times, seen you know, issues on the boardwalk, and it, it gets resolved, and it's, it's a great thing. And, Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We certainly appreciate those comments. And uh, we have now Ms. Uh, Amy Duba. <laughs> it's the family affair. Mm -hmm. I have to say, folks, that Amy helped me with a homeless person that uh, uh, needed a place to stay, and she gave me advice. So that, and we, I appreciate that very much. Help to help. Uh, Amy Duba, uh, I had written you all an email. Because I didn't hear anything from anybody. You just never got to send it. Where? When? When? Oh, um, it was at least a week ago. <laughs> yeah. It was right before I heard from you, so I thought it might have been in response to that. Okay, well then I don't have to do this here. I can do this privately. Okay. Because I just wondered what, what your response was. So. Okay, I'll do it. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Ms. Scott. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Scott. Good to see you. Ms. Scott, Long Beach. Um, I just wanted to say that um, as an African American, um, our experiences are different from other races. And um, I would like for you guys to consider, you know, our experiences and not try to, you know, not, to not try to say like it doesn't matter or, you know, you haven't experienced that because every race has their own experiences as they go through life. Um, during Hurricane Sandy was the best time for me to reside in Long Beach because everybody was one, you know. Everybody was together, you know, we were helpful to each other. It wasn't about money, it wasn't about color, it was just about people. So I ask that when you guys are um, making your changes in Long Beach and you're remodeling and you're sitting amongst, amongst each other and although there may not be um, other races in the building, but consider everyone, you know, because everyone matters here. You know, um, when you're, whatever, whatever decisions that you're making, try not to exclude anyone, you know, include everybody, you know, and just because I'm not here doesn't mean that I would not want to be here or would not want to live here, you know, so I ask that you guys just have a heart, you know, compassion, for everybody, because everybody matters. Thank you. Next we have Ms. Uh, Joanne Moore. Welcome, Ms. Moore. Thank you. Just uh, Joanne Moore, West Broadway. We just moved here, my husband. This past November, spent a lot of time walking on the beach. It's so beautiful, but I noticed all the plastic, all the plastic that was all along the beach. And I kept wondering, I kept looked online, I'm like, why isn't why aren't they cleaning the beach? It must just be that it's winter. But the plastic was there, I guess it washes in from sewers and elsewhere and from the ships out at sea. So I became very concerned about this. I became active with the bring your own bag on the beach. We had a great rally up there. But above in the tree, there was a plastic bag up there. You know, it's just it's just something that's simple to do, you know, an ordinance of some sort to discourage the plastic bag use. And um, I did a lot of petitioning for this, and there was a lot of enthusiastic support from people. That's all I'm well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for being here. This is something we've been able to do. You know, it's, it's, it's got to be an entire town that does it. You know, it's got to be the whole community. Um, 
Our next uh, person is James Mango. Welcome, Mr. Mango.
Stop lines obviously help rent the vehicles. And, uh, crosswalks also help identify the areas of safe uh, crossing the streets. Any uh, status update on those? I've only seen maybe one or two of those since I've already passed July 4th. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Brazo uh, can give us an update. Or should... okay. Oh, I see. It's, it's the police department again. Okay. Actually, you're absolutely right. We uh, convert it to the use of the thermal plastic, which is much healthier for the environment as well as it gives uh, much more light to the stop lines. And it's a machine and it broke. Uh, we just got it back this week. So we started the project, uh, we stopped the line project back up. We're going to go as long as we can. The thermal plastic is also very expensive. So we're going to go as long as we can with the stop lines and then follow up with uh, crosswalks where we can and then we will convert to paint. Uh, to save money and hopefully as the years go by each year will add additional thermal plastic that will last longer. And this idea, I, I wanted to honor these two men at the city council meeting, uh, Richard Boomin and Neil Montego, because they met with uh, Jack and I before the summer to bring forth this project and they're too humble to, to come here and get a proclamation, but uh, I do want to send out a thank you to them. That's a great mention and a great update. Thank you, Mr. Pinto. Uh, uh, I'll pass on more to them. Uh, I meet with them maybe once or twice a week on things. Uh, one more thing, I, it was brought up to me, I was looking to find out. I know it's not the Housing Authority and Channel Park homes are not under the exact uh, direction of, of the city. I know they're Housing Authority, but I know the executive director and, and the board are, are placed by our city administration. I saw a bid notice going out for some sort of uh, restoration or, or renovation to the Channel Park homes. Is there any update the city? I, the bids went in the 30th. It goes to. We wouldn't have that update. It wouldn't have any. Is there any information the city had? Maybe any information on what the project could be? It is in our city. Um, what's going on? No one knows anything. No, the housing authority, as you know, is a separate. It's not just a. It's not just a separate department. It's a separate entity. It's a separate entity. It's a separate corporation. So, and by the way, the director is actually chosen by the board, not the city. Okay, but the city manager is the board. I just want the city manager. The, 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 board board. Is chosen, the board is chosen by members of the city, that's correct. Okay. The I'm just wondering if people have asked me, and I don't know any answers, I'm wondering if anyone from the city would like to share a little light on what's possibly happening uh, or could be happening in that area. If not, uh, I don't know. How do we access the housing authority? How would we uh, see if they get some public information on some sort of. Could you go right to Mr. Cruz? So okay. Because we don't really have any, any information. Okay, that's, uh, that's the answer. Thank you. Yeah. Spindle, thank you for being thank here. Thank you. Folks, thank you for coming out tonight, everyone. Uh, get home safely. Again, get home safely.